The Jack Benny Program, transcribed, presented by Lucky Strike. Do you do that, do that, do that, do you do that, do that? Be happy, go lucky, be happy, get better taste, be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Friends, pair and compare. See for yourself that Luckies are made better to taste better. From a newly opened pack, take a cigarette made by any other manufacturer. Carefully tear a thin strip of paper straight down the seam from end to end and gently remove the tobacco. In tearing, be sure not to loosen or dig into the tobacco. Now, do exactly the same with a lucky strike. Then compare. Some cigarettes are too loosely packed. Some even fall apart. But look at that lucky. See how it stays together. A perfect cylinder of fine, mild tobacco. So round and firm and fully packed. So free and easy on the draw. Now, what does this mean to you as a smoker? It means your Lucky is free of excessive air spaces, hot spots that burn harsh and dry, and those annoying loose ends that spoil the taste. And because your Lucky has long strands of fresh, clean, good-tasting tobacco, it burns evenly, smokes smooth and mild. Yes, tear and compare. Prove to yourself that Luckies are made better to taste better. Then make your next carton, Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Gentlemen, it gives me great pleasure to bring you the star of our show, a man who... Wait a minute, wait a minute, hold it. Don, who's this guy? What's going on here? Jack, I'm sorry, but when I read the introduction you wanted me to give you, I just had to go out and hire someone else to do it. You hired this fella? Ladies and gentlemen, it gives me a great pleasure to bring you the star of our show. Wait a minute, wait a minute, fella, wait a minute. Don, you're the announcer on this show, and you've got to introduce me any way I want you to. Well, Jack, this time I'm not going to do it. I've got pride, you know. Pride? Ladies and gentlemen, it gets me Oh, shut pride. up! <laughs> Don, what is this... What, what is this pride you're talking about? I'll tell you what it is. Just because you played a violin duet with Isaac Stern on last week's television show... I'm not going to introduce you as a great concert violinist. You're not. Ladies and gentlemen, it Hold it, will you, please? Hold it a minute. Hold it. Phil, great concert violinist. Dad, you sound like somebody's been spiking your rosin. <laughs> well, you're a fine one to talk. What do you know about music? Okay, Jackson, okay. I will admit that personally, I may not be the world's greatest musician but I was smart enough to get together one of the finest musical aggregations in the world. Oh, you were, eh? <laughs> Phil, if your band is one of the finest musical aggregations in the world, I'd like to ask you a question about Don Rice, your bass player. Nobody slaps a bass like Don. Does. That's what I'm getting at. Why is it he always sticks his hand in a bucket of water before he slaps the bass? Force of habit. What? Used to work in the brewery slapping labels on beer bottles. <laughs> All right, Phil, I'll accept your explanation of Mr. Rice's musical eccentricity. But what about Bagby, your piano player? What about good old Bag? Well, Phil, I won't... I won't say anything about the fact that he's on parole. We'll forget that. But he can't read music, he doesn't know the white keys from the black keys, and I never saw such a crazy-looking piano. What's that extra pedal for? That was Bagby's idea. Four pedals on a piano? What are they? Soft, medium, loud, and gas. <laughs> Gas pedal? Never knows when he'll have to make a getaway. <laughs> oh, then that answers my other question. I was going to ask why the piano has white sidewall tires. <laughs> Old Bagby thinks of everything. Well, it's too bad he doesn't think a little more about music. What? Phil, you know as well as I do, not only does Bagby play by ear, but if it isn't in the key of C, he can't play at all. Oh, he can't, eh? No. Okay, Jackson, you asked for it. Hey, Charlie. 
Yeah? Come here a minute. Phil, you don't have to go through all of this. Look, that. you said that all he knows is the key is C. Now, let's find out. Go ahead, ask him anything, anything at all. Okay. How about something with three sharps? Go ahead, Charlie. Give him something with three sharps. Well... <laughs> Think hard, Charles. Oh, I know. The Andati movement from the Barber of Seville by Gillette. <laughs> Wait a minute. The Andati movement from the Barber of Seville by Gillette. Three sharp, look sharp, feel sharp, be sharp. <laughs> Well, you can tell that corny Bagby to go now, will you? Yeah, okay, you better leave town. How do you like that? He drove the piano right out of the studio. I don't know why I get into these things. All I wanted was a classy introduction. Ladies and gentlemen... Not from me. you! <laughs> I want the introduction from the one who's supposed... Oh, hello, Mary. Hello, Jack. What are you mad about? I'm not mad. Just that I asked Don to do something. When he refused, it hurt my feelings. Don Wilson, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. After all, Jack has done for you. In fact, we should be grateful for what he's done for all of us. And when Jack requests any of us to do something, we should make every effort to comply with his wishes. Thanks, Mary. I guess you're right, Mary. Okay, Jack, I'll do it. I'll introduce you as a great concert violinist. Ladies and gentlemen... Wait a minute! <laughs> Mary... Jack, is that what you asked Don to do? Introduce you as a great concert violinist? Yes, that's all. That's all? He ought to slap your face. <laughs> Mary, I thought you were on my side. Whatever gave you the idea that you're a great concert violinist? Because on my television show, I played a violin duet with Isaac Stern. That's why. And he wants me to call him Yasha Benny. <laughs> What are you laughing at, Mary? <laughs> Last year he killed a grasshopper, and for two weeks I had to call him Frank Buck. <laughs> I didn't kill that grasshopper. I brought him back alive. <laughs> well, don't be so smart. And anyway, I don't know why Don had to go out and hire someone. Oh, to... hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. I'm glad you're here. It's about time for... Dennis. Dennis, you're limping. Yeah, but I didn't get hurt bad. Hurt? Dennis, you have an accident? Yeah, as I was crossing Sunset Boulevard, I got run over by a piano. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> that was Bagby. He got his piano from Madman Wurlitzer. <laughs> now, Dennis, I got to get this program started, so you better sing your song right now. I'm not going to sing until you pay off for my being on your television show. I can't do that until next week. Jack, why can't you give him the money now? Oh, he isn't going to pay me money. Mr. Benny said if I went on a television show, he'd do something for me that's a great honor. A great honor? Yeah, he's going to write in my name for president in the California primary. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for heaven's sakes. Imagine writing Dennis's name for president. If I'm elected, I'm going to declare war on Johnny Ray. <laughs> I will now sing my campaign song. Just sing the song you're supposed to. If you're too high, never mind. Hey, 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 sing the song you're supposed to. Be a beggar, be a thief, be my. Sunshine or my grief, be anything but darling, be mine. Be a wise one, be a fool, treat me tender or treat me cruel. Be anything but darling, be mine. Climb to the top of the ladder, be princess of all you 
By Dennis Day and Ferry Hey, you! Uh -huh. I don't want you to do any announcing on this show. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. Hey, Mr. Wilson, why ain't gonna do no introduction? Why, give me my dose so I can go home. You haven't done anything. I'm not going to pay you. Oh, yes, you are, Don. You got yourself into this. Now pay him and get him out of here. Oh, all right. How much do I owe you? A buck and a quarter. <laughs> okay, here you are. Thanks. So long. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, fellow. Come back here. Yeah. You take a job as an announcer on a coast-to-coast -coast program for a dollar and a quarter? Uh, that's my price, a buck and a quarter. <laughs> Come here a minute. Buck and a quarter for an announcer. Read this, will you? Just try this. Yeah, oh, okay, sure. Uh, the Lucky Strike program star Jack Benny with my living stars, Kalara, Spotter, Satanasai, and your truly, Boyd from Kvetch. <laughs> that's, that's your name? Say, that's all right, Mr. Kvetch. Jack, you wouldn't dare. Hey, I can lead a band, too. Now, wait a minute, Kvetch. You ain't leading my band. Phil, you stay out of this. I can also sing tenor. Well, did you hear that, Dennis? Who cares? I'll be in the White House. <laughs> You're not going to be president. Forget it. You stick around, Mr. Kvetch, and I'll talk to you after we do our play. Oh, Jack, are we going to do a play? Yes, Mary. Tonight, we're going to do our version of that great universal international picture, Bend of the River. Oh, Jack, isn't that the picture that starred uh, Jimmy Stewart? That's the one. It's a colorful epic of the days of the covered wagon as civilization moved westward into Oregon. So, Don, set the scene. Okay. In the year 1867, at the end of the Civil War, a covered wagon set forth for the northern tip of Oregon. Its destination was a new settlement. And leading this intrepid group of pioneers was that fearless frontiersman, Buck Benny. Yes, Buck Benny. That's me. Our wagon's cargo was not guns, ammunition, or other implements of war, but food to tide the settlers through the rugged winter. Say, Buck. What is it, Keith? We've been on the trail since sunup. Don't you think we ought to stop for the night? No, Kate. we got to keep going till we reach the next water hole. It's only about two miles, I reckon. Oh, Buck, let's stop here for the night. I said we're going to keep going. Well, can't the horse pull for a while? I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Hey, Dobbin, get out of that wagon. Sure gives you a buck and a quarter's worth. <laughs> uh, Buck, why can't we stop here? We got plenty of water. I know, but it's not safe here. This is Indian country. You sure? Of course I'm sure. Look there on the ground. A scalp. That's yours. Pick it up. <laughs> oh. As 
we continued towards the hills, we saw signs of Indians everywhere. Though we knew we were surrounded by redskins, we made camp and ate our evening meal. We each ate a can of beans, and they would have been easier to digest if we'd have had a can opener. <laughs> Suddenly, I heard horses' hoofs. As we listened in the darkness, guns ready for action, the horse came closer. Suddenly, a stranger galloped into our camp. He was about as tall as Jimmy Stewart. And he was slim like Jimmy Stewart. Come to think of it, he smiled like Jimmy Stewart, too. He came up to me and said, Say, excuse me, partner. I've been riding alone for days. I reckon it's all right if I join you into Oregon, ain't it? But he didn't talk like Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> What's your name, stranger? Jimmy Stewart. <laughs> Must have been him, all right. All the Indians applaud. <laughs> I invited Jimmy to join us. He got off his horse. Well, he didn't exactly get off. He just straightened his legs and the horse ran out from under him. <laughs> we talked for a while, and then I introduced him to my wife. Oh, Jimmy. Yes, Buck? I'd like you to meet Kate. Hi, Jimmy. Wow. Kiss me, Kate. What? Come here, baby. Hey, hold on there. <laughs> Got her dropping script. Wait a minute. I thought you were the shy, bashful type. Now, that's in pictures. For the kind of dough I'm getting here, I'm letting myself go. <laughs> Take a look. Okay. Hey, say it's a bear. No, no, Jimmy. It's a buffalo. I thought it was a bear. But I took, I took his word for it. It was a buffalo. I couldn't argue with a man who's been pinching nickels all his life. <laughs> I'll get him. <laughs> Found it and ran into the woods. Hey, wait a minute, Jimmy. We'll soon have meat. Well, what do you see? Quiet now. I'm taking aim at a raccoon. Now, don't shoot. It might be Keith Harbor. <laughs> oh, yes. Come on. Let's get on with the hunt. Finally, we returned to the camp with plenty of game. This was due to our wonderful hunting dog. This dog wasn't a pointer. He was too well-mannered to point. He'd just nudge you and say, Over there, stupid. <laughs> We weren't in camp very long when all of a sudden... Indian! Hey, they're attacking! Come on, let's see if we can spot them all! That's no use. We might as well give up. I ain't a-giving up. 
My name is Buck Benny, and I ain't afraid of man, beast, or grasshopper. <laughs> but I know these Indians. Look, two of them are coming up to powwow with us. They sure look savage. How, Indian? How? Oh. What tribe you Indians from? Sioux tribe. Me, Big Chief Thunderstorm. Oh. And who you? Me, little white cloud that cried. <laughs> What? Having faith in all kinds of weather. <laughs> we bound for Oregon. My name, Buck Benny. Uh, let me speak to him, Buck. I talk their language. Listen, you Indians. Ugh. Koala Monga, Shoshone Tabits, Iroquois Ook, Palebo TP. Baja Nogula Munga, Diga Muga Muga, Ugh Nagula Iroquois Tanahas Wigwam, Magohu Shoshone Unga Sagano Talena. Sagamore squaw tummy gitchy gummy. Oigan nuga magahoho. What did he say? He's running for president. <laughs> now, Chief, we're not looking for trouble. We want peace. Only way you can have them peace is make you join tribe. You mean make us Indian? Yeah. We decided to be adopted by the tribe. And that night, after adoption ceremonies, we sat around the campfire with the other Indians and sang songs. Like the Selnamo, Navajo, Kiki Poo, like the Cherokee, I'm an Indian too. <laughs> Just like Battle Axe, Jesse Block, Manny Sacks, like those Indians, I'm an Indian too. A suit, a suit, a suit. Some Indian summer day, here's what we'll do. Take some Indian maid for riding to the canoe. I'll wear my mocha, a wampum belt, other hat. It will go to prove you don't know your song. see the whites of his eyes. <laughs> Wait a minute, stranger. What can we do for you? I want to buy your food. I'm working with a bunch of miners. Gold miners? Yep. And we struck a drift. We got tons of gold, but we need food to cash through the winter. Our food ain't for sale. It's for the settlers in Oregon. But I'll pay you well. I'll give you ten times what you paid for it. And in gold. He's offering us gold, Jimmy. 
gold. Let's sell. Now, Buck, think what you're doing. With the gold, you'll starve to death. But with the food, you'll live. Live to see another spring with its flowers and soft breezes and balmy air scented with orange blossoms. Now, wouldn't you rather have all that than to die with the gold? <laughs> we waited two weeks while Buck thought it over. <laughs> I made up my mind, Jimmy. We're going to sell the food. And I say we're not. Who's going to stop me? Me and my shooting iron. Well, I've got a gun, too. Draw. Oh. I hated to do it, Buck, but it was the only way. Oh, that's all right, Jimmy. And I'll forgive you before I die. No, oh, and I'll wait a minute, partner. Don't say die. Huh? We cowboys never die. We just go on to the big corral up yonder and gather around the heavenly campfire where the chuck wagons always fill, where the deer and the antelope play, <laughs> and the wagon wheels sing a happy song, and the little doggies wander around among the purple sage, and there ain't no last roundup because the cowboys... Get through already. This won't sound good on the Amos and Andy show. <laughs> Goodbye, Jimmy. Goodbye, everybody. So, Buck passed on. But I know that even though he's not with us, he's happier now than he ever was before because we buried him in the gold mine. <laughs> and so the wagon train pushed onwards. Ever onwards we pushed till we reached the settlement in Oregon at the bend of the river. Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Friends, you can tear and compare and see with your own eyes how luckies are made better to taste better. From a newly opened pack, take a cigarette made by any other manufacturer. Carefully tear a thin strip of paper straight down the seam from end to end and gently remove the tobacco. In tearing, be sure not to loosen or dig into the tobacco. Now, do exactly the same with a lucky strike. Then compare. You'll see some cigarettes are so loosely packed they fall apart. Others have excessive air spaces, hot spots that burn harsh and dry. But you won't find that in a lucky. Just look at that perfect cylinder of fine, mild tobacco, so round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw. Notice those long strands of fresh, clean, good-tasting tobacco that smoke smooth and even, that give you a milder, better-tasting cigarette. Yes, friends, tear and compare. Prove to yourself that Luckies are made better to taste better. Then make your next carton, Lucky Strike. Do you do that to study? Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. Ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank Jimmy Stewart for being on my program tonight. And be sure to hear him tomorrow night on the Lux Radio Theater when he will do No Highway in the Sky. Good night, folks. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. Jack Benny came to you transcribed. This is the CBS Radio Network.